today's special interview, um, my guest on this special interview is Dr. Tumani Kora of the Medical Research Council in the Gambia and he has studied to be a physician, also a researcher and also somebody who did a lot when it comes to the field of medical sciences across Africa and also in the globe. Um, Dr. Kora, we have been plighted with many disease challenges in the Gambia. One of them today, very common, is hypertension, diabetes, hepatitis, and just recently, aflatoxin. Is this a big concern? It is a concern. Aflatoxin is not a recent problem in the Gambia. Um, in fact, it's one of the uh, major contributors to the development of uh, cancer of the liver a disease which affects the youth, the productive. I recall when I just came back to the Gambia in the late 80s, I saw a returning Gambian engineer in his early 30s, bright young chap, and guess what? He had cancer of the liver, and he died six months later. The amount of investment that the parents must have put into him and the government must have put into him to him to go up to become an engineer and then to die within six months of coming back home really still hurts. And uh, aflatoxin was the main contributing factor those days. There is an answer to cancer of the, um, of the liver and there is hope that it will be eradicated certainly in the Gambia and worldwide in, in a few years to come. The, uh, discovery of a vaccine against um, uh, cancer of the liver, first trialed in the Gambia, uh, is um, really a breakthrough in medical science. That research is ongoing in the Gambia. Children were immunized against hepatitis B, the causative organism for hepatitis, uh, for hepatoma, and were being followed up over a 30 year period. The hope is that we will not be seeing as much or in fact, those that we hope that those who receive the vaccine will not develop cancer of the liver in the future. Now, if we come back to um, what uh, is commonly described as modern disease or diseases of the rich or uh, in, in the world is hypertension and, 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 and diabetes. Yes, it is a growing concern worldwide. It is a growing concern in the Gambia as well. The change of lifestyle affects these diseases. Um, my grandfather, uh, who uh, grew up in Tamba Sansang, and your parents who grew up in the Nyomis, walked in the field all the time. They really walked and spent energy doing this. Now with uh, modern status, sitting in cars, driving, no exercise whatsoever, these diseases are creeping up. My one fear about these diseases is that we then to, that we do not assume that the treatment that is working in the north would work exactly the same way in Africa and in the Gambia in particular. We need to do research on these diseases in the Gambia and find out what we need to do to reduce the, um, the, the, the incidence of this disease and how to fine tune the treatment to be suitable for the African people. That is work that is ongoing in South Africa, that is work that needs to be done in all countries in Africa. When it comes to the issue of hypertension and diabetes, you've talked about lifestyle, um, which in the change of lifestyle, like you said, um, less exercise, and we're consuming too much organic food and also fatty food. So um, would you advise for people's lifestyle to change, to do regular exercise and eat a balanced diet and eat, maybe be a vegetarian? Well, I, I wouldn't go too f that far to say be a vegetarian, but it's not bad to be a vegetarian, by the way. Um, uh, you get enough of what you need as long as you know what you're eating. Lifestyle is important. Um, look, in the villages in this, my beloved country, years by, people will wake up in the morning and what do they eat? Mono. Yes. That's what, that, and the kus one is fantastic. But we've left that now. We want we all eating bread. Why? For many, it's the, the the food for the poor. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's strange, but I, I, it, perhaps not not that bad. I, I I think we should try and go back to basics. Eat what we grow, and grow what we eat. We must exercise, and you know, 
I don't want to see people all flocking into gyms. I'm not against it. But if you take fast strides every day, up to 10,000 steps every day, believe you me, you're as healthy as most people who are uh, filing themselves, finding themselves in the gym all day. So eat healthy, exercise, rest, and you should be fine. So when it comes to um, the medical aspect of it, um, in terms of health challenges, we know the Gambia is a very poor country, not enough health facilities, even whereas they are available, they lack the resources to be able to treat uh, certain diseases in the country. Um, what's your opinion about that? Let me first of all say, um, trying to avoid politics as much as I can, um, health is expensive. If you want your people to be healthy, you've got to spend. It is not cheap. You must also focus on preventive treatments, prevent the disease rather than try curing the disease. We must make sure that the budget for the health in this country is one that the doctors who are so well and highly skilled, trained and highly skilled, could become efficient. If you do not provide the doctors with the bare basic needs, if a malaria season is coming in August and by June you don't have anti-malarials in the country, then you're asking for trouble. We know what the basic disease pattern is in this country and we've got time to bring in those drugs on time and we must make sure that those drugs are regularly available to treat the ailing population. Is it the same for a Gambians to go to Senegal for certain treatments when we can have the doctors trained in the country, we can have the sophisticated um, equipment to be able to treat such kind of diseases? It, it is not a shame. I'm, I'm, I say this because I recently um, um, uh, visited the United States and I learned quite a few things that people are now talking about health tourism. So very expensive treatments uh, for Americans are being taken in Cuba. I, I, Americans are now traveling to Cuba and to uh, uh, and, uh, other countries in North America for that, for that treatment. What I don't like to see happen is that common diseases that are regularly and efficiently treatable at home you don't have the wherewithal to do this, that you have to travel. But if it's um, diseases that, are really, that really need highly skilled, highly professional people, um, then if, it if, if the country cannot provide that treatment, it is not a shame for those people to travel overseas. But it must not, it must not be for malaria. Are you optimistic about the future of health treatment in general in the Gambia? I hesitate to answer positively or negatively. We need a system change, we need a focus on health, we need funding for this. And if anyone can provide such funding, not necessarily government, but other people as well, we should be on the pathway to self-sufficiency and to finding cures for various diseases in our beloved country. Dr. Tumani Kora, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.